All right, everyone. So let's get ready to do our resistance band session. Everyone will need to take out the resistance band from the bag. Uh, save the bag because that will help to preserve your resistance band for many years to come if you take care of it. So everybody, uh, get out your resistance band and then decide whether you're going to be in the standing position as we have here for the resistance band exercises, or if you have any reason that you wouldn't want to do the exercises standing up, you also have the option to sit down to do all of the exercises. And I'll be giving instructions for how to do the standing ones as well as the sitting ones. And what we're going to do is go through the exercises in order as they appear in your booklet that comes with the resistance band, and that way you'll know how to use it uh, once you leave the session. Okay, so a couple of things uh, that we're going to do is first go over how to use the resistance band, how it works, um, just what to do with this. So what I want everybody to do, whether you're standing or sitting, is to hold out the resistance band out in front of you with your hands about shoulder uh, distance apart. And we just want you to get a feel for what the resistance band feels like. So what I want you to do is just wherever you are is to just slowly pull that apart. Okay, now there are a couple of things to keep in mind when you're using a resistance band. Number one is that you want to have full control over the movement. You don't want the resistance band to control you. So you always want to have controlled motion. Very, very good. So that's one thing. The second thing is, is to get the most out of your resistance bands. You want to make sure there's always tension in it. So you don't want to do a repetition and then find yourself with a saggy and flabby resistance band. That's what your body will look like if you do that. So we want to make sure that we're always keeping things tight. Okay? So that's the other rule. Okay. Now a couple of other things. If you're in the standing position, we want to make sure that you're standing correctly and safely so that you don't get hurt. So your feet are, you're going to want them about shoulder um, width apart or maybe hip distance apart. And you want to keep your knees soft. So we don't need to be squatted down all uncomfortable, but we also don't want to lock out our knees. That's going to strain our back and perhaps our knees as well. So we just want to have soft knees. We also want to be tucking in all of your core. So if I were to go around and punch, you know, punch, well, I wouldn't punch you, but touch your core, it should feel tight. And so that's what we're looking for. So just make sure you're sucking it in and you're tightening everything up as you do these exercises. A couple of other things. You need to breathe. So holding your breath is not a good idea. What will happen is eventually you'll hold your breath and then boop, you'll just fall right over. So we don't want that to happen. You want to breathe during every single exercise. You want to breathe out every time that you're doing work, anytime that you're exerting. And so you'll see that as we do the exercises. Okay, now some of you will think, okay, this is, this is pretty tough, uh, and this will be just fine for you. But some of you will say, whoa, this is way too easy, I'm really strong, and I'm going to show you two ways to make the exercises harder. So we were all in this position before. One way to make it more difficult is to move your hands closer together. So let's all try that. And now pull that resistance band apart. Should have gotten harder. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> The other way to make this more difficult, and it's even more difficult than this, is to actually take the resistance band and fold it in half. So now if we fold it in half and we go back to the shoulder width apart and we pull on that, that should feel even harder. Yes? And then of course if you're super strong, you can fold it one more time. I can't do that. So those are just all of your different options that you have. Okay, so hopefully everybody is ready to go. Do not use it as a weapon. Um, <laughs> and so make sure you're not hitting your partner as you do this. So we're going to do exercises that require some space going sideways and also front and back, unless you're sitting in a chair. So just make sure that you have enough space around you. So we're going to work our large muscles down to our small muscles. You always want to start with large muscles first. If you start with some of the smaller supporting muscles like triceps, or biceps, what will happen is you'll wear them out, and then when you try to use them to support a larger muscle like chest or back, they will wear out and you won't be able to get a good workout on your large muscles. So we're going to do all of the large muscles, which are chest, back, and legs first, and then we'll move on to the smaller muscles, shoulders, biceps, and triceps. All right, I know you guys are ready to go. So we're going to start with our first exercise, which is the chest fly. And what you're going to want to do on this one you can just try it single layer, and then if in the middle of the exercise you decide, oh, that's way too easy, you can fold it. <laughs> so what we'll do is we'll put this behind our back. If you're sitting or standing, it's the same positioning. 
and you're going to straighten out your arms. Now, Lourdes is showing us what it might uh, look like in the back. So you see that it goes across that back. You can either have it under your arms. I like to have mine over the shoulders. I mean, the elbows, it just makes me feel better. So whatever feels right to you. The key is to keep that torso or that core engaged. And what we're going to do is we're just going to come in with our arms and we're going to come back out. And so what we're doing is we're using our chest, our inner chest muscles. You guys keep going. We're using our inner chest muscles to bring this resistance in. Now, if it's too easy, that looks too easy. Stu, is that too easy? Okay, so Stu's going to try to maybe either hold it further back and see what happens. And you can do somewhere between 8 to 12 repetitions. If it doesn't feel hard enough for 8 to 12 repetitions, Stu moves his hands further back, and that was more challenging. Now he can try to fold it in half and see. But so to feel free to experiment as long as you're not getting hurt, um, as long as you're not straining joints or doing something along those lines, experiment and see how that goes. Look at that. Stu's able to do it just fine. So that's perfect. That's the chest fly. So you can practice that. Once again, you're using that inner chest muscle to bring that resistance in. All right. Very good. So I think we've done at least 12, right, Gordis? Yes. Probably. Okay. Uh, so that was the chest fly. Now what we're going to do, when we look, we're going to do the, the back, the pull down. So this is for our lateral muscles here in our back. They're called the lats sometimes. And it's kind of like doing a pull up, except you don't have to hang yourself and pull up your whole body weight. So this is way better. So what we do with this one is once again, and if you're standing, you're going to stand in this position. If you're sitting, you just sit upright. We're going to hold the resistance band, not completely above our heads where we can't see it, but maybe just where you can see it. And what we're going to do is we're going to pull apart the band until it reaches the top of our chest. And we're going to come back with a slow and controlled motion. Now, what's really important about this is that it doesn't look like this. Okay, this isn't actually doing anything. We've got to pull that band apart until it reaches that chest. So you're keeping those arms straight and you're pulling to out towards the side. Now that's pretty easy to do. So to make it more challenging, you can move your hands further in, which does make it more challenging. Remember that you're engaging these. So what you want to do is every time you work your muscle, you want to try to focus on the muscle that you're working and engage it. You want to feel it working. On this one, be careful that we're not seeing any of this stuff going on in the slack and the flabbiness. We want to keep that engaged and keep going. On this one, we might be able to try, I'm going to try to fold it in half, see what that feels like. So I think that might be doable for some people. So once again, if you feel strong enough, you can fold that band in half and try that out. Again, 8 to 12 repetitions is all you need, so if you've done that, it's really just so that you feel comfortable with the exercise. Everyone feels good? Okay, perfect. So now we're going to go on to the chest again. We've given our chest a rest. What we're going to do is a chest press. So this is very much either like bench pressing or like doing a push-up. So once again, we're going to put this behind our backs. If you're standing, make sure, once again, soft knees, keeping that core tight. And we're going to be pressing straight in front of us. You can hold your band upper with your hands, kind of overhand. You can do underhand. It really doesn't matter as long as you're pushing with those chest muscles. Once again, you want to be engaging that chest muscle. You can make it harder by holding it further back. And then you might want to try folding it in half again, seeing how that goes, maybe. Yeah? <laughs> I'm going to fold mine with Stu so that he has some support, moral support. <laughs> Exertion is when you're working hard. So when you're breathing, you're breathing in as it comes in and out as it goes out. That's why counting is good. It forces you to breathe out when you say the number. So that's another method that you can use. So that's what we're going to do with the chest press. You're like, I've done way too many already. I've got a strong chest. Okay, so let's move on to um, the, another back exercise. This one's going to be a back row exercise. So for those of you who are sitting, it's going to be a little bit different than the people who are standing. So I'm going to start with the standing people, then we'll move to the sitting people. 
So for those of you who are standing, what we're going to do is we're going to drape the resistance band on the floor. You can stand on it with two feet. There's other ways to do it. I'll show you some other ways to do it in case this is uncomfortable for you. And what you do want to do is you do want to create some resistance. So one of the ways to create resistance is to wrap your hand around the band. And what we want to do is we want to keep our knees slightly bent, so soft, and we want to bend at the waist. We don't want to bend at the back. So we're going to bend at the back and show them how not to bend. That's bad. So if, you're, if your back is rounded and you're looking at the floor, that's not a good thing. You want to bend and tip at the waist. You want to have your chin up so you can see in front of you. And the motion of this exercise is to row so that your elbows, it's like you're trying to reach the back wall or the ceiling. There you go, head up. And we're keeping those elbows closed. I don't want to see these chicken wings flapping around. So we want to keep those arms close by. There we go, no chicken wings. Those are for eating, not for exercising. Okay, perfect. So those of you standing, you got it. For the sitting exercise, you can either wrap it around one foot or even both feet. And what you're going to do is sitting in your chair, you want to give yourself enough space so you don't hit your elbows on the sides of the chair. But we don't want to fall off either. And so Fran is going to row. Go ahead and give me a nice row, keeping those elbows in. So it's really the same concept here. So we're just rowing. You should feel this working, the middle part of your back, kind of around the spinal um, area. So that's what we want to be working. If for some reason having both feet next to each other is a problem in the standing position, you can also just step on it with one foot. If that seems to take some pressure off your lower back, that is also an option. I'll show you one more for home use, probably not where you are in class. But you can do the same thing. I'm just going to sit here on the floor for a second. You just basically sit on the floor, wrap the band around your feet, and you do the same type of motion, except now you're sitting on the floor, and that might take the strain off of your lower back if you have any lower back issues. So those are all of your options. Everyone's good with that? All right. So what we're going to do next is legs. So legs are important to work. We don't want to be top heavy and all muscular and have nothing to support it with, so we do want to work our legs. So what are we going to want to do for if you're standing? So once again, I'm going to give the standing instructions first, kind of hip play. You guys take off with it, and then I'll work with Fran. And by the time I finish with Fran, you guys will be super buff. Um, so what we're going to do for those legs is we're going to stand on the resistance band, um, and we're going to do squats. So if you've ever done squats before, you want to find a squatting position that's comfortable for you. For most people, it's about having your feet maybe around the distance of your hips as far as how, how wide to have them. For other people, they're a little bit more comfortable closer. Other people like it wide. It's really up to you um, how you do that. Now we want to add some resistance here on squats. So Lourdes is ahead of the game. She's already in position. She has bent down and she has loaded the resistance band <laughs> onto her shoulders. Now, if you're super extra tall, that might be challenging to do. So the other option is to create a lot of tension because if you, if you go down and there's slack in the band, you're not doing anything. So you want to create enough tension that when you go down, there's not slack in the band. I like going over the shoulders better, so that's what we're going to do. Just like the back row, we've got to keep our chin up. You should never squat with your head looking at the ground. That's going to take you out of positioning. What you want to do is you want to be going back as if you're sitting into a chair. So Lourdes is going to show this from the side. See how her, her butt, her backside, goes back. Okay, now Lourdes, do an incorrect squat if you even know how to do that. Okay, so that's not good. Make your knees, ooh, that's definitely not good. So your knees should not cross over the line of the toes. They should be tracking right in front of those toes. So maybe it's something that you can watch each other do in the class. If you feel safer, you can always grab a chair and put it behind you and just touch down onto that chair until you get the hang of it. It does take practice to do a proper squat. So, Let's so do some squats. So we're going to do some squats here. Um, 
If you have knee problems, you may not be able to do a squat. You can do the one that we're going to do in the chair here in a second. Or maybe you just don't go as far down until you're able to build some strength um, into that. We want to keep those toes pointed directly forward. There you go. Nice. Nice. Look at that smile. Head is up. Perfect. <laughs> now, just squat along as I work with Fran here in the chair. So you obviously can't squat if you're already sitting down in the chair. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a one-legged leg press one at a time. So what you want to do is you want to wrap this around your foot. You want to grab each end and you want to hold on to the side. If you don't have a chair with, side, with handles, it is a little bit more challenging. You'll have to secure it some other way. We don't want it to snap. And what you're going to do is you're going to bend your knee towards you. There, more, more. That's right, make it tougher. And then you're going to push back out. So if you've ever seen those machines that are like a leg press machine, that's what we're doing here. So if you're sitting in a chair, test it out. Fran's making it harder, so that's perfect. And again, you want to be going up and down this way, almost parallel to the floor. So if you're going down here, that's really not going to get you the leg workout that you're looking for. Okay, so perfect. Now, of course, we cannot just have one large leg and one small leg. That's not going to work. So we need to train the other side. So Fran's going to do the other side. Fran is already an expert. So if you're following along in the chair, just make sure that you practice with both sides. Sometimes your dominant leg just is more coordinated, it works better, and then your other leg, you don't know what it's doing. It's doing its own thing. So this will create some muscle memory and neural programming. And so the more you do these exercises, the more natural they feel. Was it harder on the left? It was just spasm. <laughs> See? There's always something there. <laughs> okay, so that was the squat. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do a lunge. A little bit more challenging, but again, as you practice, it gets better, I promise. So for a lunge, if you're in the standing position, what you're going to do is you're going to step on the resistance band with your front foot. Now this is really key. When you step back with this foot, you need to take a wide step backwards, like super wide where it feels weird. And you want to point your toe forward. So a lot of people have the tendency to do warrior two or one of these yoga positions. We don't want that. We want to turn that foot so that it's pointing forward and we want to lift that heel off the ground. So you can see that Lourdes has that heel lifted off the ground. So does Stu. Perfect. Now once again, we want resistance. What are we going to do? We're going to add it. Now to do a proper lunge, what you want to do is you want to go straight down and back up again. You should not be moving in the forward plane at all. So that is incorrect what Lourdes is doing. She's doing that on purpose. So that's incorrect. Show them correctly. If we were to tie the string to you, it would just you would just be moving up and down that string with your head. That's what we want it to look like. So Stu, give that a shot. Yeah, very good. It's not easy though. It's not easy. So if you're having trouble with the lunge, a couple of things to keep in mind. Typically the two things that you're doing wrong if you're having trouble is that if you're too close together, if your feet are too close together, you don't have any space to come down. You're going to need to back that foot up. If you're in this position and you don't have your toe pointed forward, now you're doing some weird squat that we don't know what's going on there. So you got to have that back foot in the right position. And then when you do that, you just rock and roll. Look at these experts. Now, of course, we have to switch legs. Now, poor Fran is sitting in the chair. There's not really a different exercise that we can do. So for those of you who are sitting in the chair, you know what you get to do? Another leg press. Okay. So that just makes you really good at doing the leg press. <laughs> there you go. Get a little bit more going on that left leg. Excellent. And again, a lot of times when you switch legs and you have your non-dominant leg in front, it's just more challenging. Maybe you don't do this type of movement on a regular basis. So just practice. Practice makes perfect for sure. If you ever have a chance to do your lunge, looking at a mirror to the side, it helps keep you honest on whether you're going up and down. So I do encourage you to find a mirror just to practice. All right, so we got our big muscles done. Check. Now we move on to the small muscles. All right, so 
Um, we're going to do a, oh, let's see, what are we going to do next? We're going to do a bicep curl next. That's what's on here. So the biceps are the front of the arms. We tend to use these more, so they're a little bit stronger. Um, Fran, since you're sitting in the chair, you're just going to hook the band around your feet and kind of have your feet out at an angle, kind of exactly like the way you did a back row. And for those of us who are standing, we're going to stand on this. And we've got to add some resistance to do a bicep curl. So you can wrap this around, maybe that's too much, a few times. And what we're going to do is we're just simply going to curl in front of us. You can see Lourdes from the side. The key thing is to make sure that your elbows are staying locked into your side. Well, we don't want, see, Lourdes is doing this incorrectly again, those swinging elbows. <laughs> She's a good role model for what not to do. No, I'm just kidding. She's a, she knows what she's doing. So that's why we want to keep those elbows very, very close. You want only your arms to do the work right here. You want to isolate those biceps. If you're sitting in the chair, same thing. You've got that wrapped around your feet. We're keeping those elbows in, not moving them. And we're just curling up. And again, 8 to 12 repetitions, making sure you're breathing. Make sure your knees are not locked. Soft knees always. Everyone's good. We've done a bunch. So two, more. two more. Two more. Oh my goodness. Lord's keeping track. So she's, she actually knows how to count. She's keeping us honest. <laughs> I like it. All right. The next one we're going to do is shoulders. Now this one is a little bit more challenging. Um, I'll show you some modifications in case it's hard. This, if you're sitting in a chair, this one becomes a little bit strange. So you have two options if you're sitting in the chair. One is that you can sit on your resistance band, but if you have any issues with getting up and down and that sort of thing, it may not be um, as easy. So the other option is to wrap it underneath the chair, which also, you got it, which also prevents it from snapping underneath you. So that might be e an easier way to do it. So you choose which way you want to do it if you're sitting. Okay, we're going to do, if we're standing up, we're going to Stand with two feet, or one foot. Two feet is harder, so we can always try the harder exercise. Once again, toes are pointed forward, that core is tight. We're gonna bring those hands up to shoulder height. Our elbows are down and our palms are facing forward. It's just like, woo, we want everyone to see everything. That's the position that we're in. All right, you with me? Okay, friends all situated. What we're gonna do is we're gonna push above our heads and come back down. We're leading with our hands on the way up, elbows are leading on the way down. Very good. Now this is tough to stand on with two feet for some people. So if that's too hard, you take a foot out, it's usually best to leave the back foot on. The, the resistance band just won't bother you quite as much. So that's another option. And if that's still too hard, because a lot of times we are not used to lifting things above our head. That's just not a natural movement. You may need to actually do one arm at a time so that you can give yourself a little bit more slack and train one arm at a time. So there are lots of options. What's more important is that you use proper form and technique so that you don't get hurt than to try to muscle it out and you're doing it incorrectly just to try to do it, but now you injure yourself, especially the shoulders. How's that feel? So you tried it both under the chair and sitting. What do you like better? I kind of like this way better. Okay, yeah. I do too. So she prefers sitting on it. You have both options, so you can choose either one. Okay, good. Good shoulders, good shoulders. Now we're going to do another shoulder exercise. For this one, um, you can try sitting on it. And when you sit on it, you'll have to kind of cross like we do standing. So sit on it mm -hmm. and then switch hands, basically. Got it. And see how that feels. For those of us who are standing, Lourdes has got it. We're going to stand on it. Once again, two feet is hardest. We're going to switch hands. That's it. Just switch hands so that the resistance band is crossed. And what we're going to do is keeping our arms straight, not locked, but straight, and keeping our palms facing down, we're doing a side lateral raise. How's that feel sitting down, friend? Good? Okay, so you might just have to add some resistance to it. Yeah. So, we're just going straight out. Now again, this is the hardest position you can be in standing with two feet. If that's too tough, take one foot out, it gives you a little bit more slack on the resistance band, and do that same exercise. Right. If that's still too hard, right. 
Take out some of that tension and do one arm at a time until you get stronger. I would rather see you do that than this. This is what I see a lot of times. This is not the matrix. We're not in a movie. We're not dodging lasers. And so that's how people get hurt. So if you cannot keep those arms straight and sturdy as you're doing this, don't worry about it. Pick an easier version of it until you get stronger. You guys have strong shoulders or what? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, perfect. So now we're going to do the hardest exercise. Well, I think it's the hardest for most people because, again, it's an unnatural movement for us. We're going to work the tricep, which is the back of the arm. Now, the back of the arm is important because it takes up 70% of the space of your arm when you're looking at it. If you ever feel like you've got like those bat wings as you wave to people, you're like, Whoa. that's your tricep. It means you need to do some work. Tighten that up so that way you can wear tank tops and sleepless things and you look good. Okay, Stu? So when you wear sleeveless, we want to make sure your arms are good. <laughs> so on this one, you can keep sitting on it. You're going to do the same exact thing. Once again, two feet is the hardest. Hold on to the ends really tight because this one gets slippery. You're going to put the resistance band behind your head. So, Lord, is if you can turn to the side and show them or the back what that looks like. You want to keep your elbows close to your head. So we don't want to see chicken wings again. We want to do this. And then we're going to extend those arms. Yes, there you go. Very good. We are extending. We're keeping those elbows close and aligned with our ears. Good. Two, if you can keep those elbows kind of close. There we go. Right there. Perfect. That is tough. It's a tough exercise. How often do we take a weight and put it behind our heads and lift it up? Not very often. So if that's too difficult, I'm going to recommend that you take out one of your feet, step on it with your back foot. That gives you a little bit more slack. If that's still too hard, drop one of the sides and take the one side with your two hands and now you can do that so that's a lot easier uh, which one are you going to show them okay so the other version of the tricep is to hold the resistance band around your mid chest and you're doing basically a kickback the Lord is showing so for some people maybe who have shoulder injuries, you've had surgeries or something, and this is a difficult movement or you're limited in range by flexibility, this is just another way to work that tricep. Of course, you do both sides <laughs> without having to lift your arms above your head. So if you have any restrictions, if you've had um, bypass surgeries or anything like that where you're not able to lift your arms above your head for any reason, that's just another option on that one. So I think we've covered them all. Uh, you can also do things for your abs and your lower back and that sort of thing, but it entails lying on the floor. This is really the basics of doing a, a good um, exercise. If you keep your core tight, you actually engage your core as you're doing these exercises. Uh, and so that's going to be really helpful for your abs and also for your lower back. Um, so hopefully this is not the last time you use this resistance band. Hopefully you'll use it again and again and again. So much so you'll need a new one at some point. So I want to thank uh, Lourdes and Sue and Fran, our lovely participants, and all of you for participating, and we wish you much success. Thank you very much.